Hello everyone, this is criminal profiler Pat Brown and I'm here to do a little bit on the Madeleine McCann case. And many of you know I don't do a running commentary on the McCann case, even though I did write the book, uh, Profile of the Disappearance of Madeleine McCann, which is available at Smashwords, Kobo, Apple, but not at Amazon where the McCanns got rid of it. So um, why am I here today? Uh, because I do talk about this case once in a while when I think there's something really important to say. And um, what I'm going to say today is I read John Clark's book, Searching for Madeline. What's the full name? Oh, My Search for Madeline. Sorry. My Search for Madeline, one reporter's 14-year hunt to solve Europe's most harrowing crime. I read this book so you don't have to, and you don't have to give him 10 bucks on Kindle uh, so you can find out what it's about. <clears throat> because, oh my God, it is, how many pages? 437 pages of torture. But I'm going to break it down for you, just the most important things about this book and why you don't need to read it, um, <laughs> because you really don't need to read it. But let me tell you what this book is about. First of all, it's about him, his 14-year, what does he call it? The 14-year hunt to solve this case. Dude, you're not the police, but it is always about him. He thinks he is the one who's going to solve this case, that he has to do this. This is his job to solve the case. Uh, I thought you were a journalist, although I'm not quite sure what kind of journalist, but you're a journalist, and a journalist's job is to report the news and perhaps do some investigative uh, kind of journalism. I don't have an objection to that. However, you took it upon yourself, John, to decide that you were the one to solve this case. And so you went after everything and you got mad at everybody who didn't agree with you or didn't cooperate. Quite often in the book, you'll see people refuse to talk to me or the police refuse to give me information. You know why? Because they don't have to. <laughs> they don't have to. You're a journalist. You're not. You're, they don't have to give you information, John. OK, so. So this 14-year hunt, okay, let me tell you what the book's really about. It's a character assassination book. Uh, he pretty much assassinates the character of everyone who is not in his little group. Um, he assassinates, of course, Gonzalo Amaral, the Portuguese police, the Portuguese, the country of Portugal. Um, everybody who's ever written anything that was opposite of what he thinks or challenges what he thinks. And, you know, it's kind of weird. He, he, you know, he didn't include me in the book. So I'm not sure if I should be insulted or thankful, but if he does another, probably another, uh, you know, addition, then I'm sure he'll include me in there for, for some kind of character assassination. Um, but, you know, I, I, I don't think it's a really great idea to write a book and pretty much say everybody around you, everybody else is, is a horrible person. Maybe you could say Christian Buck Bruckner is a horrible person. And he does say that, um, he does do a character assassination on Christian Bruckner, which he should. But, but the funny thing is, he never comes up with anything actually connecting Christian Bruckner to the crime of the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. So what was the point of your book? What, how many pages? Again, 437 pages and 14 years worth of work. And you came up with pretty much nothing except Christian Bruckner's a creepy dude. Okay, we all know Christian Bruckner's a creepy dude. And what's your point? So <laughs> this is the basics of the book, but I'm going to go into some of the interesting things in this book, which just kind of made me maybe go, hmm, and uh, again, so you don't have to read the book. Okay, let me get into it. Now, one of the things he says right up front, let me read this to you. This is from his book. <laughs> and I think this, this, is, this tells you a lot right here. First of all, he says early on that uh, there's evidence that the the, the uh, windows were jimmy, the ch shutters were jimmied, and that the 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 sliding door was left open, and that there were creepy people hanging around, um, uh, watching the McCanns. Three things that are actually not proven. So anyway, um, now let's go on to what he says about the facts of the case. I'm not going to de dedicate thousands of words to the disastrous pro. He does. Well, let me tell you. He dedicated thousands of words to things that were totally unnecessary and irrelevant, but he's not going to dedicate any words, uh, not thousands, any words, <laughs> um, into the, what he calls disastrous probe, into the McCann's potential links to the disappearance. Hey, you're supposed to be a journalist. Why are you not including the issues of 
why the McCowns were considered suspects in this case, <clears throat> what evidence might support that. Why do you want to ignore that as much as possible? That's not what journalists do. All right. But I'm not sure you're really a journalist, but okay. You'll probably come back and say, I'm not really a profiler. So we might be even there. <laughs> okay. Anyway, he goes on. <clears throat> Sorry, I cleared my throat. <clears> throat> um, he's not going to give those thousands of words, largely because so much has already been written about the mistakes that were made by the police, not the investigation by the police, but the mistakes that were made by the police. Mistakes. But also, oh, in the media too, the mistakes the media made. I'm not going to talk about the mistakes that were made by the police or in the media, but also in Kate McCann's excellent book, Madeline. Oh, of course it's an excellent book because you're on the same team, as well as the detailed benchmark tone. I'm sorry. I don't want to laugh, but I can't help it. <laughs> the, the benchmark tome on the case by Anthony Summers and Robin Swan looking for Madeline. Oh my God. I mean, a benchmark tome. I'm sorry. That was one of the worst written books I ever read. Um, much of the couple's incisive incisive analysis went on to become the basis of the comprehensive comprehensive eight-part Netflix documentary broadcast in 2019 with some of my own input, of course, and analysis. <laughs> in other words, all the worst stuff you've ever read or seen about the Madeleine McCann case. He's like, yes. These are the guys you should pay attention to. And especially because I took part in all of this because I am important. Um, and then he says, I have never wavered in my belief that the parents were innocent. Okay, wasn't that, that's nice. Okay, so now, so right up front, he's basically saying he's not gonna, he's not in his 437 words. He's not gonna even talk about the McCanns or any of the uh, evidence that leans that direction. That sounds kind of like a remit from Operation Grange, doesn't it? Okay, um, but let's look at what else he's had to say. I, I wrote a bunch of notes, and I'm just going to kind of run through them just so, again, you don't have to read 437 pages and spend $10. Okay, so this is one of my favorite ones. He complains that the police went after Murat with scant physical evidence. Okay, so you're upset about scant physical evidence, but you're chase, you think Christian Bruckner is the dude, even though there's like so far absolutely nothing connecting him to the crime at all, outside of the fact he's a creep. So you're upset that Marat was focused on because he was weird and was right outside, right, right outside the McCann's flat. He was there. He lived right across, right, diagonally across the street. He was there. He started interpreting. He, he inserted himself into the investigation as an interpreter. That bothers you, but some creepy dude who just happened to live in the area and has some other crimes to his name, you don't care about the scant evidence there, do you? I mean, you're just going to spend an entire book on Bruckner talking about how creepy he is without any real evidence. But you see, you don't necessarily think that one thing applies to the other. And you don't care about the not-so-scant evidence, maybe, pointing to the McCanns. Okay, let's see. Oh, oh, here's the next thing. It's fascinating. Here's his character assassination of Portugal. He goes on and on and on about how Portugal is a pedophile's paradise. That that there is so much pedophilia going on there. There is there's there's uh, you know just like huge rings, huge sex rings involving small children, and and it's just you you know you can just go to you can go to Portugal and you just can get whatever you want under the age of eighteen under the age of 10, under the age of six, have sexual fun with it. And Portugal's not going to do anything about it because, you know, even the big guys in Portugal are involved in the sex rings. That's what he's implying. Well, here's my question for you, John Clark. If there is such a huge sex ring for a pedophile ring in Portugal, you know, you don't need to kidnap a little girl from British vacationers that would 
that would start a huge investigation. In other words, you got so many other options. You get so many other little children on the plate. You don't need to do something that's going to get you arrested and convicted for life. You don't need to do that. You already have other options. So your whole point about <clears throat> Portugal supposedly being just a big, huge, perverted country is really speaking against Bruckner kidnapping Madeleine McCann. Let's go further. Okay. Oh, then he says Russian child traffickers might be involved. Okay. We'll add them in, you know. And then he talks about uh, some other possible people that were creepy, like Raymond Hewlett, uh, the British expat who said he, like, Kidnap, uh, kidnap Madeline, sold her to the gypsies or whatever. And then he goes on to the bouncer from Angola. Um, and he said, oh, he said that Madeline was stabbed by the pedophile ring. No, no, wait a minute. Sorry. Mad Madeline was taken by, I don't know why stab came in there. Um, that must be a typo from, uh, I was doing voice thing. Um, taken by a pedophile ring and eventually it was brought to the U.S. And he says, I thought that was a pretty good possibility at the time. I needed to investigate it. Because you investigate anything that has to do with pedophiles kidnapping Madeline because you don't care about the evidence. All right. Then he talks about how many leads look like they're so great and we're going to find Madeline. But they didn't pan out. You know why they didn't pan out? Because there's no evidence at the crime scene to say there was an abduction. That's why they didn't pan out. But it's OK because he struggles on in his own words. He struggles on. What is it? How many years? <laughs> 14 years? He struggled on to find the guy that kidnapped Madeline. Okay, and then let's see what else. Okay, so then he writes a lot of stuff in his book, all the people he attacks. I'm not going to give everybody's name, everybody attacked. It's just, you know who they are if you've followed this case. Anybody who has supported the concept that Madeline McCann was not abducted was attacked, except me. Okay, then he spends a lot of time talking about drifter guys hippie guys and all the weird relationships and all the creepy crimes they committed. In other words, Christian Bruckner was kind of a drifter criminal. He was, he was what he was. There's nothing nice about Christian Bruckner. I mean, that guy deserves to be in prison forever. I agree with John Clark on one thing. He committed enough crimes that he should just be in prison, but somehow Germany kept letting, letting him out and letting him out and letting him out. So he kept running around the world. Um, and he hooked up with, other creepy people. Um, he had a lot of creepy friends. So they they were they did a lot of different kinds of crimes, a lot of low-level crimes of burglary and then drug, drug drug distribution, whatever they were involved in. And you know, <laughs> they were all involved in this kind of thing. So they were a creepy group. And then he some of them had like you know vans they lived in or whatever. Okay, they exist and they exist in Portugal, they exist in most countries. Uh, these, these creepy groups of people who sort of, no, some of them are just you know, kind of hippie, you know, s sweet hippie types. You know what I mean? Just make smoke a little weed, hang out, you know, do hippie kind of things. They're not, they're not um, criminals, but there is another group that is more of the criminal bent. And Christian Bruckner was like, he was like a lifelong criminal of, I would, I, I call him the kind that like, pretty much does everything. In other words, there's no crime he wouldn't like to do. <laughs> he just likes doing crimes. Um, anything can get away with. He's a psychopath and a half. There's no question about that. Um, he, he supposedly when he was younger, he exposed himself to little children. He tried to touch little children. I'm not going to argue that. And, his, and he is, was, was convicted of a rape. I'm not going to argue that. The dude is a sexual predator. He's a, he's a criminal of many, many sorts, but that doesn't mean he committed the crime of whatever happened to Madeleine McCann. Um, because there were, you know, there were other creepy dudes in the area. And wh what John Clark tries to do, because he wants to focus in on Bruckner, is to basically say every other creepy dude in the area was also connected to Bruckner. <laughs> He'll say that. I'll say, well, I think they work together. And I think they work together. As a matter of fact, I think they all work together. And on top of that, high level people work with them too. So it's a huge, massive sex ring. Um, it's a pedophile ring. And, it's, and everybody's on the dark web. And it's this huge ring that for some reason decides to kidnap a blonde British girl from some British parents at a well-known resort so they could all be exposed by the, by, the, by the police and eventually all get convicted. No, they don't do that. There, there's a lot of evidence that Christian Bruckner had messed with like the children of women he was with. That's very common with these kind of guys. Um, 
uh, if you're in a sex ring, like some kind of pedophile ring, what you do is you abuse children, you know, you know, your own children, children, you babysit children, you know, because you're not going to, or children of drug addicts, prostitutes, um, children who have no home, uh, children who aren't going to be missed. And if they do get sexually assaulted, probably have no one to go tell. You know, you got all those kids. You don't need Madeline McCann. You do not kidnap somebody like Madeline McCann to start a huge international um, uh, investigation, which is exactly what happened. So that, that would be stupid to even do that. So now let's see. He talks about, oh, let's see what else he talks about. Oh, my goodness. Oh, supposedly, see, see, Bruckner, Bruckner, I pronounced his name right. Christian Bruckner talked a lot of shit. And he's a psychopath, and psychopaths are pathological liars. So supposedly Bruckner said things like, you know, I got this van and I smuggle lots of weed in it, and I could smuggle a kid in here too. Oh my God, that means he kidnapped Madeline. No, that means a dude probably constantly tells lies and stories and whatever he wants to do. It doesn't mean he couldn't do that, but on the other hand, he might be just talking shit because that's what a patho pathological liar does. He likes to see your face when he says things. You know, I could have I could have taken Madeline and then watch you go, oh, my God, did you take Madeline? You know, he could say anything just to get just to see what people will do because he finds it amusing. But unless you have physical evidence that actually connects him to the actual disappearance of Madeline McCann, you got nothing. So. He talks shit. Okay, that is not really very useful. All right, let's see what else. Okay. Da, 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 da. More people acting badly, more people. Oh my goodness, let's see. Okay, more oh, more more acting badly stuff. I mean, most of the stuff is about uh, Christian Bruckner acting badly. That's why it's a uh, 437 pages of tedious boredom. Um so let's see. Oh, then it goes on about um, the issue about him having violent porn, uh, porn violent porn of children um, and porn with himself in it. Again, dude's creepy as all get out. I would be happy to have him be in prison forever or get the death penalty because I'm kind of supportive of that, even though some people don't. But anyway, um, especially when it comes to raping and murdering people, I'm kind of okay on that. Uh, but it's not a political channel, so let me not go there. Uh but he can go to prison for life. I'm okay with that. The guy shouldn't ever be out in society. He shouldn't. Um, but then here's here's some other things he says. So, okay, so the guy's creepy. He does porn. We know he's creepy. There's lots of creepy people. They weren't all involved in the what happened to Madeline. Okay, let's go on here. Then he says these really interesting things. Um, you know, as a journalist, maybe you shouldn't say these things. John Clark, you're supposed to be a journalist. You're supposed to be digging up facts. He says... Maybe he was even there on the very night Mad Maddie went missing. That's not a fact, dude. That's just a maybe. So what? <laughs> you're supposed to be a journalist. Facts. Maybe. And your opinion really just don't matter. Okay. Then he, then he goes even, oh my God, he gets even crazier. Here. He thinks that Christian is working with a whole lot of accomplices. Um, he talks about David Edgar, you know, who has been the, um, uh, the retired police guy who's always been on the McCann side. And David Edgar believes that Maddie was snatched by a child prostitution ring. Really? I mean, again, you don't need to kidnap Maddie. You can get, you can get lots of other little girls without doing all that work and getting in all that kind of trouble with the police and with international investigations. There's a ton of little girls out there. You can whip up that don't have the high, uh, high, uh, the kind of exposure you're going to get with a McCann child. Um, so then he goes on again to say that he thinks there's a big pedophile network and possibly including high level people. Okay. So that's the book in a nutshell, essentially. Um, it's a character assassination book of everybody who doesn't agree with him. Um, it basically says that Christian Bruckner is a creepy dude. And his own personal belief that Christian Bruckner's with a big, huge sex ring, including all the top people in Portugal, um, <clears throat> apparently thinks that this is that's how he, he got away with all of this. Um, and oh, uh, let me let me just put the, la the last bit in. He also supposedly did this three three hour interview with the German prosecutor. And what did he get from that interview? You know, those hard questions he asked. He got nothing. <laughs> 
again, again, because um, um, if you listen to the Australian uh, journalist who is a really, really good journalist, he is a journalist. Uh, um, and that is Mark, and I'm going to always mess up his last name because I can never pronounce it correctly. Mark Sonokonoko. <laughs> <laughs> um, fabulous guy has the Maddie, Maddie podcast. That's something to pay attention to. That's something to spend your time on. Maddie podcast is excellent. Um, Mark also had a, um, interview, an interview with the German prosecutor and, and, and he really nailed them with a lot of things. And basically the German prosecutor just kept stumbling all over the place because he couldn't answer the questions. Like, do you really have any evidence? And the answer is no. So this guy, John Clark supposedly has a three hour interview and he comes up with nothing, but he never asked any really hard questions. He just let him let the German prosecutor fumble around and kind of went, oh, okay, you know, because he doesn't want to admit, he doesn't want to admit that this guy who just wrote a whole 437 page book on really, there's no evidence linking him to the, the, uh, the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. Um, so he kind of let the German prosecutor off the hook with it. You know, we, we just have to get enough evidence for prosecution. So, mm, okay, so that is that is the book he wrote. Um, so now you you know you don't have to read it, um, and uh, it, it, you know it just goes to prove one more thing that many of us have been saying that at some point they're going to try to to to, to nail this crime on a pedophile, um, either a dead pedophile or or a pedophile who's in prison who's going to want to maybe confess because they'll get a plea deal confess and I put quotes around the confess because if if somebody confesses a lot of times you don't need evidence <laughs> in other words they'll sit down and whatever information you fed them then they'll say yes I did it I was in the area at the time I saw the opportunity to take Madeline I took Madeline and I killed her and I buried her someplace that you'll never find her okay the guy confessed therefore the crime is solved boom so far Christian Bruckner has not confessed um uh but, you know, I don't know if he will confess or, but up till now they have that, you know, the German prosecutor has nothing on this guy uh, other than the fact he lived in the area and had a phone, which I think a lot of people lived in the area and had a phone. Now, if I were, if I saw evidence that Madeline was abducted and if I were the police working this case, would I look at Christian Bruckner? Yes, I would, because I think it's due diligence to look at people who have that kind of a, a creepy you know, criminal record um, of he's a sexual predator. I would look at him. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with looking at the guy or anybody else who has that kind of sexual predator you know, label attached to them. But I also pay attention to evidence. And so far, there's no evidence, evidence of an abduction, never has been evidence of an abduction. Uh, and certainly the evidence has supported that the McCanns may well be involved in what happened to their daughter. So keep... Okay, police, keep your options open. But <laughs> one thing that, you know, is that one thing is true. There's no evidence pointing to Christian Bruckner at all, at all. So anyway, that's it. That's it for today. I just wanted you to be able to, again, not buy the book, but if you want to buy my book, <laughs> you can do that. And that, uh, uh, at the end of the, uh, it's again, um, profile of the disappearance of Madeline McCann. You can find it everywhere but Amazon because Amazon got their, got Carter Ruck, their solicitors, to threaten Amazon with a lawsuit and have my book, and they had my book pulled off of the Amazon site uh, because they were afraid uh, it was going to get too much attention. And they were correct because Amazon controls the majority of the book selling business. And, and, and uh, Kate's book was here on the, on the site. Mine was right underneath it and it was going gangbusters for five weeks until it disappeared because. The McCanns did not want that book to be read, um, but it is available elsewhere for $2.99. So, you know, you can get it. Um, so any rate, uh, pleasant to be here today to talk to you all about this. And uh, I thought it was an interesting book to read, even if I thought it was complete crap. So, <laughs> so any rate, you don't have to. One more time. You don't have to. Thank you for being here. And if you haven't been here before, please do like and subscribe down you know, below there. You can just hit the button for subscribe, hit the button for like. And of course, it says share too. So share with the other Madeline McCann groups. Uh, so they also do not, anybody in those groups doesn't have to read this book. Bye-bye. See you next time. Maybe a long time from now, but I'll see you again sometime in the future. Mm -hmm.